In this video, I'll show you a few ways to use a mixing console in your studio for music production. Let's start off by setting up a mixer for recording into a DAW. Let's say I'm going to connect a kick drum microphone, a snare drum microphone, and two drum overhead mics. Those microphones will connect to the first inputs on my mixer. Before moving forward, I'm going to set the preamp gain for each channel. I'll engage the solo or PFL button and adjust the channel preamp so that the signal peaks at about plus three dB on the meter. From here, there are a few options, and which option you choose depends mostly on the audio interface that you're using. If you've got a two-channel audio interface, you can ultimately only send two channels out of the mixer to be recorded. If you've got an eight-channel audio interface, you can send up to eight channels out of the mixer to be recorded, assuming your mixer has enough outputs for that. To connect your mixer to a two-channel audio interface, I would suggest using the main outputs on the mixer. The left and right signals that come out of the main outputs will include every channel on the mixer based on each channel's fader and pan settings. The main fader or master fader will control the overall level of everything that is sent through the main outputs. I'll usually have this set to unity gain or zero dB. The channel fader controls the level of that signal sent to the main outputs and the pan knob controls the balance between the left and right main output. Remember, with this method, you won't be able to adjust the level of the snare microphone separate from the level of the kick drum microphone once you record. So it's important to get the mix before hitting record. In a moment, I'll show you what you need to keep everything separated so that you can mix later on after recording. In the DAW, I'd set this up with a stereo track, input one to the left, input two to the right. Arm the track for recording and adjust the master fader or the interface preamps so that the level in the recording software is peaking at about minus 12 dB full scale. That's the way I'd do it if I had a two channel audio interface. If you have an audio interface with more inputs, you can record each microphone to a separate track in your software and mix the microphones independently after recording. In this case, I would connect the mixer to the audio interface using the direct output for each channel. Each of these direct outputs would connect to an input on my audio interface. Keep in mind that these are line level signals at this point, so you can use the line level inputs on your audio interface. No need for a microphone level input. Recording this way, using the direct output on each channel into a multi-channel interface, you'll set up a track for each channel. That way you can manipulate each microphone separately in the mixing process. Once you've got your cables connected, your DAW configured and level set, you can press record. In many cases, you'll find a mixer to be very helpful for general routing needs. The possibilities are endless, but here are a few ideas. Let's stick with the example from before. The drummer needs to hear himself playing, so I need to route the signal from the drum microphones to a pair of headphones that he can wear while performing. You could connect the headphones to the headphone output on your audio interface or the headphone output on your mixer to hear the mix as you're recording, but sometimes the performer would prefer a special mix made just for them. The best mix for recording isn't always the best mix for input monitoring. Using the auxiliary outputs on my mixer, I can set up a headphone mix based on what the drummer needs to hear to feel most comfortable while performing. Keep in mind that the aux outputs on your mixer don't have built-in headphone amplifiers, so you'll need an external headphone amp or headphones that power themselves. I'll connect aux one from my mixer to my headphone amplifier and connect the drummer's headphones to the headphone amp. Setting up the headphones like this, I can decide how much of each microphone is sent to the drummer's headphones by adjusting the aux one send on each channel. You could even create multiple headphone mixes for each performer in the band if your mixer has multiple aux sends. Ernesto, are you sure that's enough headphone cable? Yeah, man, yeah, I can make this work. Okay. You know what, I've got a better idea. This video is sponsored by the III Studio Wireless Plus headphones. These headphones offer wireless, low latency audio, and they have completely changed the way I record music. From switching between instruments while creating to setting up quick headphone mixes, these headphones have proven that wireless music production is finally possible at a reasonable price. Get a free hard case with the promo code Audio University. Thanks again to III for sponsoring the video. Aside from creating headphone mixes, a mixer can be useful anytime you need to route signals to multiple destinations, such as alternate speakers or to a tape machine. A mixer in a patch bay will open the door to incorporating outboard effects like compressors, reverb, and delay. 
you gain the ability to scale your collection of outboard gear without the need to rewire everything. This brings me right into the final way to use a mixer in a studio, which is for mixing. For this, I think it's helpful to look at how music was made before digital audio workstations became mainstream. Recording engineers would connect all of the mics to various channels on the mixing console, which would ultimately be routed to either a two-track tape machine using stereo recording method from the beginning of the video, or to a 4, 8, 24, or even 48-track tape machine using the multi-track recording method that I showed you. The main difference being that they used a tape machine in place of the audio interface. But they didn't mix in a DAW, of course. Instead, they would play the multi-track tape back through the console, sending each track on the tape to a separate channel on the mixer. Then the engineer could use the console and patch bay to route signals to and from the outboard equipment in the studio and ultimately create a final mix that would need to be rendered or printed to a two-track tape. Personally, I don't use my mixer in this way, and that's because my mixer doesn't really offer anything that I can't do with my audio interface, patch bay, and DAW. Running an audio signal out of my DAW, through my mixer, and back into my DAW would just add a lot of noise that could have been avoided just using an EQ within the DAW itself. However, if you have a particularly high quality mixer, you might want to run your music through a channel strip or bus compressor. In the video that's on your screen now, I'll help you decide which mixer is right for you. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.